Have you ever heard of failed ovulation? Let's talk about what it is and how you can spot it from your fertility chart. Hello my lovelies and welcome to another one of my videos in which we'll be talking about what failed ovulation is and how you can spot it from your charts. Now a while back I did a video on why it's impossible for you to ovulate twice in a cycle. Now I don't mean releasing two eggs at the same time because of course this is what gives us twins. But I mean maybe on cycle day 12 and on cycle day 16 you ovulate again. This is hormonally impossible because of the way that our body works. Now I got a lot of pushback on that video because there's some research out there that talks about getting several surges leading up to ovulation. But that is not the same as ovulating several times. Unfortunately, some of the websites and articles online have used this information to suggest that ovulation is possible several times in the cycle. So hence the pushback in the comments. Now, if you're interested in that video, I'll make sure to link it in. So that was just a bit of background because that is a separate but related topic to field ovulation. Because what you can see in a cycle is several surges, as I said. So you may have several positive ovulation tests, but that doesn't mean that you are ovulating several times. The only thing that can confirm if you have ovulated is, well, a scan or when you're at home is with taking your temperature. So if you are seeing that your temperature is elevated, then together with the positive ovulation test and the elevated temperatures, it is pretty straightforward to pinpoint ovulation somewhere in between. Now, if all of this is completely new to you, you're going to want to have a look at my free charting course, which will teach you all about ovulation tests and how you take your temperature and how to spot when you ovulate it. So I will make sure to link that in as well. And if you're already charting, but you would love to learn how you can interpret your charts the way that I do, then have a look at my chart interpretation course because it is finally completely ready. All of it is online. The course contains modules on ideal charts, estrogen dominance, low progesterone, early menopause symptoms, hypothyroidism, adrenal fatigue, inflammation, and PCOS. And you can choose to either purchase the whole course or just the bundles that you're interested in. Anyway, that brings us back to failed ovulation. If we can pinpoint ovulation, how can we pinpoint failed ovulation? So as I said, that wouldn't be with several positive ovulation tests. If you have a few around day 12 maybe, and then a few again around day 18, that doesn't mean the first time necessarily you had failed ovulation. The only way that you can spot it is if you had a positive ovulation test followed by a temperature rise that then suddenly dips again within one to two days and it might be followed up again a few days later with a proper temperature spike showing that ovulation finally did work but then that first temperature spike suggests that there was failed ovulation and the reason that you can spot it that way is because when ovulation happens the follicle bursts and then progesterone is released. So if a little bit of progesterone is released, that brings up our temperature. But if your ovulation wasn't complete or it, you know, it just malfunctioned, then that progesterone will drop again. And if it hasn't gone up high enough to signal to your body that, oh, we're done ovulating and let's move on to the next cycle, then your body will still gear up towards ovulation and then that second time will happen. It is possible that after that first uh, temperature rise, you will get another ovulation test surge, another LH surge, but not necessarily because it is possible within that 72 hour range for the LH to be high enough to then trigger a second ovulation. I have to say it is a little bit risky to assume failed ovulation if you're only using a normal basal body temperature thermometer because with a device like that you will get some fluctuations anyway. You may have had a poor sleep or you may be a bit stuffy in your nose or under the weather or you have some alcohol and that can give you some temperature changes. So don't assume right away that you've had failed ovulation. You will be able to see this more precisely, I find, with devices that you wear overnight and especially the ones that measure your core body temperature so that you may wear in your vagina. I've done reviews on two of these, TempDrop and Ovusense, so if you're interested in those, then make sure to click on the playlist on your screen right now that covers several reviews of fertility products. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye!